close your eyes and be with the breath. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. And focus your attention there. And then see if you can keep it there. This is one way of making merit. We usually think of merit as connected with acts of generosity. But it's also connected with virtue, taking the precepts, and with meditating, specifically with getting the mind into concentration, first with the thoughts of goodwill, and then going deeper than goodwill, to stay where the mind gets settled down and be at peace inside. This is where the, the merit really gets good. Because what is merit? As the Buddha said, acts of merit are another word for happiness. Their actions, when you think about planning to do them, you get happy. When you're doing them, you're happy. When they're done, they're happy. Because you know you've been looking for happiness in a way that doesn't cause any trouble to anybody. In fact, you're spreading your happiness around. Even before you dedicate merit to others, the fact that you're being generous means that you're spreading some happiness. The fact that you're being virtuous, you're avoiding unskillful, harmful behavior, that spreads happiness. And the fact that you act on goodwill and you try to act from a mind that is calm, stable, still inside, that has a good impact on the world. So this is what's special about merit. It's a special kind of happiness. Happiness is based on gaining and getting. That creates boundaries. Because when you gain, other people have to lose. Or when you gain something, it means that they don't get it. And this kind of happiness can get very, very narrow. Or you want your happiness to be more expensive, then you start with acts of generosity, acts of virtue, getting the mind in a good, solid concentration. The ultimate level of merit, the Buddha said, is when you gain stream entry. So don't look down on merit. It goes all the way to the first noble attainment. Because when you gain stream entry, okay, you've reached inside and found a spot inside where you can confirm that what the Buddha taught was true. There really is a deathless element that you can touch with the mind. And when you come from that deathless element, you approach life in a very different way, a much more responsible, upright way. So it's good for everybody involved. This is the type of happiness the Buddha wants us to look for, the happiness that's good for everybody. Happiness doesn't harm anyone at all. And then when you dedicate that merit, it's, it's coming from that sense of well-being inside. It's like a current coming out of the mind. And if the mind is in bad shape, if it's all tied up in knots, then the current coming out of it is bound to be restricted as well. But if you have an expansive state of mind, then the current that comes from that is something expansive as well. Anybody who is in the vicinity, anybody who knows about that current of merit, will be happy to receive it. So remember, this is something that comes from the heart. And this is the heart side of Buddhism, the heart side of the Buddhist teachings. The fact that we want to find happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody, and that we're willing to share whatever happiness we have. That makes it even more expensive. You know, whether other people will pick up on it or not, that's up to them. But as you do your duty here, creating good causes for happiness, causes for good happiness, then whether other people pick up on it or not, that's no, no real problem for you, because you've got the happiness generated inside. 